Hi everyone, it's Carrie, and welcome back to my channel. After doing a video on how to make a Swedish torch or Canadian candle, I figured we better put it to use when we went camping this past weekend. So I put together a video of the three dinner meals that we did while we were camping. Now we stayed at Pigeon Lake Provincial Campground, and if you wanna get a review on the campground, there's a video where you can watch where I went through and gave you a tour of what the Pigeon Lake Provincial Campground looks like. But I wanna show you the three different meals that we were able to cook on the Swedish torch. Now, it may not be what you see some of those backcountry guys cooking, but I thought we should do some standard meals that I know your kids will love. And I also have links to the recipes if you want to make them at home and don't need to pull out your Swedish torch in order to make them. Now, if you don't know what a Swedish torch is, you're going to need to go and click on that previous video of mine where you learn how to make a Swedish torch. Let's go see how camping this weekend went. The first recipe we decided to do was spaghetti. So all that required doing was boiling the water, heating up your noodles, and putting in a jar of spaghetti sauce. Yes, when we go camping, that's how we roll. Each night started like this. Trevor had pre-cut three Swedish fire logs that we brought with us camping. And so to start one off, you build a small teepee fire on top and wait for the embers to fall down below. This video is sped up for the sake of time, but you get the general idea here. Brush that extra wood off to the side and then put your cast iron pot on top. Now the most exciting part was the cast iron pot sat nicely on top of the log. That was one of the things we weren't worried about and it turned out great. Boiling water, add your noodles, and away we go. So I was a little bit worried about dumping that boiling water into the strainer. So I decided to use my tongs and scoop it up and collect as much of the noodles as possible. Then my husband went and dumped the remaining water, put it back on, we next added a jar of spaghetti sauce. And then I pre-cook my hamburger before I use it. And so I added a bag of hamburger to that spaghetti sauce, mixed it all together and waited for it to become warm, which did not take very long at all. And then the last step was to take the pre-cooked noodles to dump them back into the cast iron pot and mix everything together just to make sure that everything was cooked through and nice and warm. But what was great was when we pulled that cast iron pot off, you can see how hot that Swedish candle was still going. And so what we did was toast some of our buns on top of that and coat them with butter and Parmesan cheese and we had breadsticks with our spaghetti. And then the family that was camping with us also had enough fire to cook their hot dogs for their dinner that night. It was a great success. For tonight, what we wanted to do was chicken teriyaki tinfoil packages. And I thought if we put them into the cast iron pot that we could use it like an oven. It didn't work. We went to flip over a package and it fell apart. So guess what? It turned into a stir fry. And when you're camping, you need to learn how to roll like that. We diced some yellow and red peppers and then also cubed the chicken so that it was smaller pieces put them on the tinfoil packets, so the coconut oil and some teriyaki sauce. Made sure that the tinfoil packets were wrapped up nicely with lots of space and that they lied nice and flat. And like I said before, we put them into the cast iron pot so that they could cook like an oven. But when it came time to flip them over, one fell apart, so we decided to just open the rest of them up and to cook it more like a stir fry. Now, if I had my preferred choice, I would have cooked that chicken first with some coconut oil because it's important to make sure that your chicken is thoroughly cooked and then add the peppers. That wasn't how we could do it, but dinner still turned out great. Cook some minute rice and we had a great dinner. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I post new videos once a week on Wednesdays and I would love to have you as a viewer. And for the last night's dinner, what we decided to do was my no stir beef stew. 
Well, when it comes to campfire cooking, you definitely need to stir it. So we browned the beef and then sauteed the onions into it and then added everything else and got that nice and bubbling and the stew turned out great. I heard some of the kids say, she's adding pop to it. I think that might've been one of the reason why they all wanted to try how my stew tasted. But you can make it as a no stir version as well. So for whatever reason, this log was having a harder time getting airflow into it. So my daughter spent a lot of the time fanning the log to make sure that the flames were staying as big yeah, as they needed the to so that we could make sure that that meat was browned well. And then what you add is a can of mushroom soup. The next thing you add to this meal is a package of Lipton onion soup mix. And the next thing is your vegetables. To that as well, we've had carrots and potatoes. And the liquid that you add is your Sprite. So we put in a lot of liquids actually for this one to make sure that we had enough for everything to get nice and enough moisture so that it cooked well. This one took the longest to cook and we found near the end that we were worried about the log structural integrity. And so we put it on the metal side of the grate there, tipped the log over, added some extra wood and that thing burned hot. And so the stew went and cooked. It had extra heat on this one, but you can see we've got it nice and bubbling there. And the vegetables and carrots and potatoes were all cooked through. Might have to add a little more pot there. And we knew that the stew was just the way we wanted it. And it turned out to be a great success. If you enjoyed this video, you'll probably really enjoy this next video where I show you how to make a Swedish torch. If you haven't watched it already, this is something you're going to want to learn how to make. So click on that link next and you can watch that video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I post new videos once a week on Wednesdays and I would love to have you as a viewer.